The biggest change is that the car is no longer the product mm. and that the product is the manufacturer. We haven't seen this since Henry Ford's Model T. Most that are still looking at the technical differences in terms of the product are missing the bigger picture that really what Tesla is doing is changing the way in which we can manufacture vehicles. He basically just owns the wall, buys it, climbs over it, and starts dealing with what's behind the wall that he really needed in the first place. In this video, some stunningly fair and reasonable coverage of both Tesla and Elon Musk from the mainstream finance media, and a Tesla bull and stock analyst shares what the market is missing about Tesla. So let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks check out the links in the pinned comment below if you want to take it to the next level join thousands of members on patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 q a videos loads of exclusive content exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year tesla stock price targets and even access my tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above you can also pick up some tesla elon and investment theme merch in the merch store so check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support and as we watch this clip i just want to say a special shout out to fox business for their reasonable, fair, and unbiased coverage of Tesla. 99% of the time, when the mainstream finance media are covering Tesla or Elon Musk, I spent an entire video pointing out their negativity, their bias, the things they've said that are completely wrong, inaccurate, and also skew negative, and their complete lack of understanding. Just wanted to give some credit where it's due. Nice to see. Cyber Rodeo. This was the grand opening party for the $1.1 billion Gigafactory in Austin, Texas, which began with this massive light show outside, and for the 15,000 invitees who got inside, including our friend and Tesla fan, Meet Kevin. He's got a huge YouTube channel, took a lot of great video that he's sharing with us. Guests were given the run of the plant where they saw everything from this exploded Model Y. That's what they call it, an exploded Model Y that literally floated directly above the ground so people could see the innards of the crossover SUV. They also got to see the Made in Texas new Roadster. This is the reboot of Tesla's original EV sports car. Bright red, record-setting acceleration of 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds and 620-mile range on a single charge. But as Elon, sporting a black cowboy hat, took the stage in the original Roadster, he talked about the challenge of building the massive factory and he gave timing on when new models will start rolling off the line. Here's what he said. We went through <laughs> deep freeze, rain, quicksand, incredibly fast build. It was uh, very difficult, but it's done. We're really entering a new, a new phase of Tesla's future uh, with uh, six giant factories uh, around the world. So, and scaling to extreme size, as you can see from this building, it's not small. Joining us now, Canaccord Genuity's top analyst for sustainability research, Jed Dorsheimer. Jed, yes, we now know the long-delayed production of the Cybertruck will finally start in 2023. Musk says the plant is going to churn out half a million EVs starting next year. But for you and your trained eye, what's the most important thing you gleaned from the Cyber Rodeo? The biggest change is that the car is no longer the product. Mm. And that the product is the manufacturer. It's a fantastic point albeit an unoriginal one, Elon himself has been saying this out loud for years. However, as Jed points out, most people, most investors, most in the mainstream finance media simply do not understand. The Gigafactory is the real product. The machine that makes the machine is the real innovation. How many times have we heard a Tesla Q Virgin proclaim that the competition is coming, that's why they're short, because as soon as Audi or Porsche or name this company decides to make a better product than Tesla, a better car, they will and then Tesla's in big trouble. It's pretty simple. Tesla really does have the best machine that builds the machine. It's not even close. People don't get this. That's why they miss out, don't understand the opportunity, think that a company like Ford or Volkswagen or Toyota will suddenly catch up to Tesla as soon as they decide to start making their own EVs. No, no, no. First, they need to make a product that can compete with Tesla's product, better factory, the same or better innovations in manufacturing and so on. Ain't happening. And we haven't seen this since Henry Ford's Model T that brought the assembly line. And I think most that are still looking at the technical differences in terms of the product are missing the bigger picture that really what Tesla is doing is changing the way in which we can manufacture vehicles uh, and clean vehicles at, at that. I think you're right. It's not even just the vehicles at this point. We know that the roof of this huge factory has solar panels on it. He, of course, has Solar City, that company, which does solar panels. But he is also creating something. I think it's a utility called Tesla Energy. 
he unveiled something like a robo taxi. It's going to take on Waymo and GM Cruise, which are already well into development. What else, aside from, yes, the Optimus, which was the robot, that, <laughs> that's another thing that they were able to preview yesterday on the floor. Yeah, so Liz, I'm, I'm not there on the robot, but, uh, but I will say, you know, you are touching on our thesis around um, that we call an Apple-esque uh, thesis here, that can Tesla use its brand? Uh, the, um, the, the number of users or drivers that they have, can they take that and can they uh, use that like what Apple did? Uh, and I'll speak for myself. You know, when I had the, the um, iPod from Apple, um, it was great to store the songs on that. And now today my family has 27 uh, Apple devices. Can we see the same type of phenomenon with Tesla where people that enjoy and have the vehicle um, start to buy uh, Tesla solar or the battery backup? Right. And can you see that move from vehicles over to energy? And I think there's a lot of value that uh, that we can see expand here with that. Another great point, although to be honest, it's not that difficult to join the dots here. The Tesla ecosystem, the ideal Tesla customer, buys a single product, then enters the Tesla ecosystem and eventually buys the missing products. For example, maybe they start off with a Tesla vehicle, then buy home solar and a home battery. Maybe they start off with home solar and a battery and then eventually buy a Tesla vehicle. Maybe in the distant future, they start off with a Tesla HVAC system, then eventually buy a Tesla vehicle, home battery and solar. The key difference between an ecosystem like Apple versus Tesla is the average price of a Tesla product is substantially higher than an average Apple product. Let me know in the comments below if anyone has entered the Apple ecosystem system and owns more than one Apple product? And if so, how many? And same for Tesla. Does anyone own more than one Tesla product? If so, list them in the comments. You know, he's making news right now. I want to tell you, Jed, he has just tweeted on the uh -oh. price of lithium. And he says Tesla might actually have to get into mining and refining directly at scale unless costs improve. He says there's no shortage of the element itself as lithium is almost everywhere on earth, but the pace of extraction and refinement is slow. I mean, when he sees a wall, he basically just owns the wall, buys it, climbs over it, and starts dealing with what's behind the wall that he really needed in the first place. That may be one of the best and most accurate things I've ever heard anyone in the mainstream finance media say about Elon Musk. We've got to listen to that again. I mean, when he sees a wall, he basically just owns the wall, buys it, climbs over it, and starts dealing with what's behind the wall that he really needed in the first place. Well, he's factually correct with respect to lithium. And one of the other things that I would applaud uh, what Elon is doing is by setting up manufacturing centers around the world, uh, you reduce both the carbon as well as uh, the energy uh, and the cost of manufacturing. I mean, in our attempt to move to a, a globalized world and, and focus on uh, specif specificity around um, uh, expertise, we've shifted to low cost regions that, and we've benefited from that. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing the geopolitical tensions that are changing a lot of that. And so bringing manufacturing, whether it's mining, whether it's these gigafactories, and looking holistically in terms of the system design to exploit uh, inefficiencies uh, to move right. things ahead, I, I do think that is one thing that, that Tesla is doing for uh, the human race that I think is very much a positive. Elon is such a showman, right? I mean, we, we've been showing some of the, the drone light show, which was pretty epic last night, right over the Texas sky. A huge swarm of them created images of, you know, the factory logo over the Texas sky, some of the, the Tesla models, uh, the Dogecoin Shiba Inu dog logo. I mean, uh, that I, you could actually hear the, the roar when people saw that... <laughs> dog because of course he's talked about crypto a lot uh, dogecoin's up one and a quarter percent today but you know this event looks like both sizzle and steak but if i'm ford and i've already put out the f-150 all ev lightning i am thinking what i am thinking i i'm way ahead of this guy this is a very interesting point I think the unusual appearance, the strange aesthetic of Tesla's Cybertruck may have lulled many legacy automotive manufacturers into a false sense of security, assuming that thing looks so 
fucking weird. No traditional pickup truck buyers are ever gonna buy this thing. We'll be fine. People are gonna buy our electric pickup truck instead. And absolutely, there's certainly a portion of the typical pickup truck buyer demographic that's never gonna consider a Cybertruck regardless of its performance specs, features, and functionality. But I personally think over time, as Cybertrucks actually begin to hit roads and are used by people who need them to do things, I know this sounds pretty simple, but it's actually important. When people start using a Cybertruck to start lugging their tools around to a work site, onboard air and onboard power, hey guys, check this out. You can plug your tools into here. A few more people go, huh? I mean, it's pretty fucking ugly and weird looking, but that might be useful for me. I mean, having onboard power, I don't need to carry a generator down. Onboard air compressor, don't need to carry an air compressor. That's useful. When people start seeing Cybertrucks on work sites and noticing, oh, no paint, hey, you can't scratch the paint. You mean it's got a secure bed? Oh, and those ramps that come down as well for, man, how much better can this thing get? Zero to 60 in three seconds, are you serious? This thing can tow your mum, really? It cost me a fraction of what an ice pickup truck would to own and operate. I mean, maybe I'll get one after all. I don't wanna be a hypocrite. I've got an ugly girlfriend, I still love her. Point is, over time, may take a few years, but I believe as enough consumers start to experience a cyber truck, what can it actually do? Not, oh, what do I think about how it looks, but what can it actually do? More and more consumers will realize there's no other choice. I won't be surprised if we see Cybertruck selling 250,000, 500,000, 750,000, maybe a million plus units per year over the long term. Yes, it will take some time for people to get over the way that it looks. But as you keep telling your girlfriend, looks aren't everything. The thing I wonder is how many legacy automotive manufacturers have this same line of reasoning? Well, you know what? If we're honest about it, even though this thing looks really weird, the specs are actually amazing. It shits all over anything we can produce in the same price point. We got a problem here, guys. If people actually realize the specs, the performance, the features, the functionality, the utility of the Cybertruck is superior to anything we can offer. What if they start buying these, even though they look weird, and then we can't sell any pickup trucks? I'm not sure that any legacy automotive manufacturers or even any of the EV startups, shout out to Rivian, are thinking along these lines. It's impossible to know whether automakers see the Cybertruck as a legitimate threat to sales of their vehicles. I've got a funny feeling most are probably underestimating this bad boy by a lot. Sometimes things, and even people, that look, seem, or are a little bit different can be massively underestimated by the general public. Eventually, though, these errors usually correct themselves. You know, I think most of, most of the traditional OEMs didn't take Tesla serious. They thought it was a glorified go-kart. Um, and I think that, you know, Elon has changed that calculation. And there's... Uh, um, I, I think what we're seeing is is the attempt to play catch up by most of the traditional, and and I don't want to discount their efforts. I mean, I think Ford is certainly doing a, a great job in terms of rethinking um, what we need in a pickup truck. Uh, not to mention GM or uh, VW um, with their with Porsche and Audi. So I do think you're going to see a lot more efforts, and and what we're seeing is a a faster acceleration mm -hmm. from internal combustible engine vehicles over to uh, EVs. And I think that's only going to accelerate. Yeah, completely agree with Jed here, but I want to be a little bit more specific than that. Here's a prediction, one that I've been making for the last two and a half years straight since I started this channel. Not a year will pass. Not a single year, in fact, probably not a single quarter will pass in the next five to seven years until these companies end up going bankrupt, where at least one legacy automotive manufacturer doesn't announce that they're further accelerating their EV adoption plans because of, oh, more interest from consumers than we realize, blah, 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 blah. This is gonna keep happening. It's gonna be a recurring theme. Legacy automotive manufacturers today still have no fucking idea how quickly EV adoption is taking place. Some of these morons, Yes, let's uh, pick on Government Motors, for example. Shout out to Mary B.S. Barra. Still think in 2034, there'll be consumers buying ICE vehicles that they're producing. These are their own stated goals. They're still gonna be making ICE vehicles in 2034. They're not gonna be in business in 2034. The point is, even though these companies are, oh, EVs, yeah, we're gonna accelerate our plans. We're gonna invest more. We'll have more, blah, blah, blah. They're still not moving fast enough, not even close. Legacy automotive manufacturers are currently collapsing and they don't even realize it. I've said this before, but it bears repeating. We're already approximately at price point parity. In other words, the sticker price of a comparable ICE vehicle versus EV is almost the same, but EVs have a slew of additional benefits. Safer by default, much cheaper to own and operate by default. All things considered, over the lifetime of ownership, EVs today are already cheaper than ICE vehicles. But once the sticker price reaches parity with a comparable ICE vehicle and people don't need to use a calculator or their brain and do any math and go, hang on, what about the lifetime ownership cost? Oh, it's way cheaper, okay, I don't need to worry about what it costs now, but the total cost, once people don't even need to do that calculation, it's game f***ing over. And guess what? If this happens in the next year or two, even if I'm wrong, even if it takes three or four years, let's just say, I don't know, 
2025, pull a number out of my ass, middle of the decade, for a consumer at that point in time to voluntarily pay more, thousands of dollars more to buy an inferior product that's less safe, that costs more money to own and operate, that pollutes, that doesn't do the same cool software features, that has a much higher probability of exploding in a fireball in an accident and doesn't have fart mode, for a consumer to make this choice, they'll actually need to be dumb. Mind you, there are a lot of dumb people on earth, so some of these cars will still be selling. But the point is, it's far too late for legacy automotive manufacturers. They needed to be 100% all in on EVs, no longer making ICE vehicles a few years ago to even have a chance. They are way too late to the party. And this brings me back to my prediction. This is why I'm so confident that legacy automotive manufacturers quarter after quarter after quarter will continue to announce to the market and their shareholders that they're accelerating their EV plans because of X, Y, or Z, aka excuses for being morons and not seeing what was coming. I mean, not doing anything, being complacent, and now paying the ultimate price because we're idiots. I mean, the minute they come out with a sub 25,000 or sub 27,000 car, that's it. I mean, y you will see a lot more adoption there. Couldn't agree more. And as I said, maybe a couple of years max before we're at that price point. And just to be clear, if Tesla wanted, they could be there next year but they don't need to be there next year. There's so much demand for the Model 3 and why they can keep selling these vehicles. The prices have increased good 20% over the last year or so, and people are still waiting months and months and months to buy them because there's such insane demand. Once again, credit where it's due, Fox Business, some unbiased reporting on Tesla and Elon Musk, rare to see in the mainstream finance media, and some great points here from Jed Dorsheimer as well. The most important of all, the general public still today, on average, does not understand. It's not the vehicles that Tesla's making. It's the machine that makes the vehicles. Gigafactory, the manufacturing technology, and techniques. That's Tesla's major long-term competitive advantage. This is how they reach massive scale. Something to think about. Hope you guys and girls have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to sign up to Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment to gain access to my Tesla price targets over the next decade, the bear case, the base case, the bull case, and the hyper bull case, plus instant access to well over 100 exclusive Q&A videos on just about every topic you can imagine. I'll see you over there. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you wanna take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10 year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.